All right, that's enough about our foundational stuff. Let's start building our application. So the first thing I like to do when building these apps is kind of bring in a CSS framework. And that's because we don't really wanna build out our own frameworks by ourselves. We're just gonna leverage a pre-built framework that is popular so that we can use those classes. Now, a lot of people like to bring in Bootstrap. Let's clear this. To bring in Bootstrap, you would go npm install, save, and you would install Bootstrap. And that would add this to the node modules folder and then you could install it from there. This is the way we'll use npm to bring in packages. Instead of Bootstrap though, I'm gonna go ahead and use Bulma. And if you're not familiar with Bulma, let's go check it out, bulma.io. Bulma is my current favorite framework to use right now. Bootstrap 4 is really good as well, so is Foundation. But if you go look at docs, let's go to layout. This layout section is why I really like Bulma. You have your containers and all that good stuff for the grid, but the fun parts are the hero. Hero sections here. And if you scroll down, you can do like a full height hero section. Where are those? Here we go. And then you can add uh, menus to it. So I just like Bulma's because they give you a little bit more of the layout side of things. So we're gonna bring in Bulma. You can go ahead and bring in Bootstrap if you like that. But let's go back over here. So we have added npm install save Bulma. And what the save flag does is it adds it to package.json under dependencies, yep, right there, version 0.6.2. Now, how do we add CSS to our Angular CLI project? Well, if we go to angularcli.json, this is our overall configuration for our Angular app. And down here, you can see there's a styles array that has that styles.scss file, right? here, but we want to add the Bulma CSS file and that's from node modules and let's scroll down. Uh, where's the B's B U B U we'll refresh the folder list and come back up. Bulma CSS Bulma.CSS and this is the file we want. So let's right click copy path and we'll go here, paste that in. And this is gonna be relative from the source folder. So we're gonna say back out one, and then let's do forward slashes for these. All right, so that's how we're gonna add our Bulma CSS to our overall Angular application. So when Angular runs, it's gonna look at the styles array and say, okay, we want Bulma.css, and then we also want the styles.scss file. And same goes for scripts, but usually scripts are gonna be imported inside of our Angular app files. So we'll save this and let's run ng-serve again. All right, that's all loaded up. And if we go back to our site, you notice that the font has changed a little bit and that is Bulma being loaded. So if we go back over here, let's close this out. That's how we add Bulma to our CSS files. Alternatively, if you wanted to add the actual SAS files, you could do that as well. Let's move right along and start building out our application. Now that we have a good CSS foundation, we don't have to worry about styling too much. Let's start building our Angular parts. I wanna take a step back now and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're gonna do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now modules are gonna be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant, let's zoom out a little, okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports, and you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular, you'll see it a lot in React, that's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign, and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here, we'll know exactly what we're using. Now declarations, we're using app component, imports are the modules we're importing, providers are services, and Bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really, an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator, and a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. 
So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here. We're just adding a decorator here. So this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this users module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module, and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component. And here is our component template right here. And actually, let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS Code terminal. Now, my Angular site, the way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng serve. Now the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfill, styles, and vendor. And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left. Close that, close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template, and this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even going to need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are going to get output to. And we're going to say, hello, I am an Angular application. And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. Save and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack Dev Server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line and then we serve it with one line and then we can just start working and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator, and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're gonna be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript, if you're not sold on TypeScript. And I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these, this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? You can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're gonna use and here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation, and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here, and we'll click Save. Angular and TypeScript can tell us that we're already making errors. So if I hover over this, it'll say component name is not assignable to a route. Oh, okay, well, let's try a component. Okay, so we'll delete that. Component is now normal, no errors there. If we go to home component, cannot find name home component. So this TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component, Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you want to use components? So this is what we call self-documenting and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, okay, I want component, home component, 
and we haven't defined that yet, but that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript is by using types and saying, oh, this is going to be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module. We're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this, close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components, and all of those get put together to build out our app.